There we go. Awesome. Well, I'm Karen Fox. I'm VP at the Fenton Chamber, and I am thrilled to be here. I'm a social media, social media strategist and coach, and I love helping my clients get more influence, impact, and more income. And I couldn't be more thrilled than to have Kathy Sexton here today. Kathy is a productivity and profit specialist. She's a speaker. She's an author. She's a coach. She works with small business owners and individuals to ignite their productivity. She has a program called Ignite to increase profits and accelerate. Uh, Kathy uses this passion, and you'll, you'll see it come through when she starts to speak, and her empathetic nature to help people live healthy, productive lives. Why? Because she knows the health risk of being a workaholic. She lived it and paid a very high price for doing so. As a result, Kathy is committed for helping others reduce stress by gaining clarity and focus so they get more done in fewer hours and make more money. So let's get productive and profitable. I give you Kathy Sexton. It's all yours. So welcome, everyone. I'm so excited to be here and to be able to share with you, um, especially during this time. Um, some of the de-stress zone techniques that may help you through this period. So I first off want to start by saying I hope you and your family are all well and safe. Um, this virus has gotten a little bit too close for me and I have a friend who lost um, someone. So you know, it really is real out there. But this time for everyone is scary, and I, I really understand that. And we are all unsure of what's next for us, right? And as small business owners, we are not only scared for our families and our friends, we're worried about our businesses. Um, this is, you know, now we have our children and our spouses at home living daily to turn to turn our lives upside down because if you're used to working at home you're used to having that to yourselves and with all the uncertainty we have you know we are impacted with more than normal amount of stress can anyone relate to having a little bit more stress in their life right now Mary says yes. I certainly can. <laughs> Kelly also says yes. So um, I really want to just talk about um, this guy is having a heart attack and we have approximately 2.4 million deaths each year. 75% of those deaths are caused from within our control and 75% of those doctor visits are stress related. Stress in the workplace causes thousands of stress-related illnesses every single day. And to make matters worse, many people who have heart attacks don't even have a history of heart disease. So I am what I call a reforming workaholic. For many years, I tried fooling myself into believing the lie, putting in more and more hours and working harder and harder were just a sign of how dedicated and committed I was. I saw the stress and the overwhelm and just felt like it was the price I had to pay to achieve success. The worst part is that I even kind of wore it like a badge of honor, going above and beyond just to show that I could do it all. Then eventually I fell into the crash and burn category and I was diagnosed with a stress-induced life-threatening illness and finally, I had to really truly face the truth, the truth about my compulsion to work and above all else, it took over my life. The choices I was making were literally killing me and it was my wake up call. I share my story because no matter where the stress is coming from, it can have a negative effect on our health, our health as also our relationships and those around us. If you're living, you know, a stressful or overwhelmed life, you know, it might be because of what's going on currently. It could be working, you know, too hard. Um, just maybe even thinking about the chaos in a life 
around us is sometimes normal. Be aware that you are at a high risk of burnout and derailment. Entrepreneurs tend to be self-reliant individuals, but knowing your limits is important for success. My hope is that you won't wait until you're faced with the life-changing consequences to make some changes like I had to do. And in fact, I hope your time and today will help you um, kind of release some of that stress. So I just want to remind everybody to put any questions you might have or comments in the chat as we go along. You know, we are all facing uncertainty currently, and there is, you know, a lot of doubts and fears about what's next, how are things going to change, and what will our new normal look like? But how we react will make all the difference. We have been forced in a time for change, so take advantage of this opportunity. And I really truly mean, I think it's an opportunity to make the most of this downtime that we might have. Um, we don't want to get on the other side and realize, oh, I had all this time and I kind of wasted it. So it's really important for us to look at what we can do for our businesses, for our families at this time during the downtime that we really do have. So I think that one of the biggest keys that we have to worry about or think about is our willingness to do it differently. You know, the same old thinking gets the same old results. But if we're continue to thinking the same old thinking, we are going to be not able to survive if you're not really open to change. So has everybody, anybody thought about that? Has anybody thought about what the change might look like for them? You know, the most effective step that leads to less stress is for us to give up the thinking that we have control. We have control over what happens in our everyday lives. We think we can control this and that we can make but all we can do is make choices about the people we bring into our lives, the things we prioritize and think about. We can make decisions about what we do and what we avoid. And we can take responsibility for the consequences of our actions or the things that we don't do or we ignore. But we're not in control of most things. I think there we're only control of our time how we use our time, what we do with it, how we, I call it self-management, not so much time management, our energy. What do we do with our energy? How do we use it? And the more stressed we are, the less energy we have. And then our money. And right now I know that's a really stressful thing for a lot of people, but it really does. How do we spend the money we do have? How do we put in the processes in place that we need to, to keep things going in our businesses. And then our actions and our choices. So these are the only things that I truly believe that we have control over. We don't have control over what's going on right now. We don't have control over our, what we do with our clients and our businesses. It's just we need to really think forward about how do we spend that time how do we spend our energy and money? And then what are those choices and those actions we're gonna take? Those are the things we control. So you have a choice on how you wanna react and how you view what's going on currently. So what are you doing to reduce stress? I'd love to hear some of those answers. We got any coming not in? Any answer, not anything yet. Oh, okay. here. Okay, I've got exercising and getting outdoors as much as possible during breaks. Uh, Sue says walking more. Sally awesome. says Sally says I'm trying to get outside and walk daily. Uh, oh, we've got a gifted one here. Sherry is playing the piano. Awesome. Uh, Diane's out walking her dog, Allie. 
great. Those, you know, definitely exercise and being outside. Um, my daughter does work in the field of health. And so she's been working 12 hours a day for the last two months, um, seven days a week. And, you know, wow. so every once in a while when the sun is out, I make her just take a break and go out and get some of that vitamin D. So um, taking advantage when we do have that sunshine really makes a difference. So let's talk about our businesses right now. For the majority, our businesses have taken a major hit. And I've been telling my clients now that more than ever, right now, more than ever, we need to keep pushing our businesses forward. We really need to be doing, working on that new project, working on maybe a new business model. Maybe you weren't online before and you need to start lurk, looking about going more virtual with your business. All of these things need to be, we need to be reacting to and thinking about today. So let's look at what's going on and a way to, you know, to a fresh start. We don't know what our new normal is going to look like, right? But we can get ready for the larger virtual world than ever before. I was just talking to one of my clients just right before this. And, you know, um, luckily his business, he is, um, because he's set up the virtual world for a long time now, he is actually not booming in business, but his business is continuing, which is very helpful. So if you haven't been virtual, I think that is one of the things to start thinking about because now is the time to start doing that. You know, our mindset is a major tool that will help us through. Think and stay positive is so important, not only for yourself, but all those around you. Lift up someone's spirit, spirits, you know, you might be getting overwhelmed with all this, have somebody that you can rely on, so have somebody you can bounce ideas off of. Even though we, they say so, social distancing, I want to call it physical distancing and not social distancing because social, we need to be social right now, which we're doing, you know, in these virtual Zooms. And for you, I'm kind of getting overloaded with all these Zooms, but it really is, you know, you can pick and choose what you do, but, you know, have those people that you can reach out to and talk about your business or talk about the stress that you might be going through. Kathy, if I can stop you there. Yeah. Uh, Ke Kelly said uh, one of the things that she's doing to get through this is connecting and growing close relationships, friendships also reduces her stress. And Mary made the comment that it's she's stepping back to reevaluate and actively appreciate those closest to her. Lots of time to read and pray. Awesome. Those are great comments. Um, so when it comes to uh, productivity, planning is a critical piece of the productivity puzzle. It helps you, you know, to start thinking about taking a big, you know, if you're going to change anything, you know, how do we break it down? How do we break down those larger goals into manageable steps and milestones? And we need to keep our goals in front of us, you know, which provides motivation to keep us moving forward. And planning will keep you on track, but it also sheds a light on potential obstacles when you can't seem to get through that one thing. So I think one of the things regarding planning is spending 15 minutes at the end of the day can save you 60 minutes the next uh, day. So think about if you are working this, you know, today and at the end of the day, you just take a few minutes and think about what's the next thing you'd work on? What is the next important thing you need to do? and have that be the first thing you do tomorrow morning. Instead of waking up, starting your computer, getting lost in email, getting lost in other things, you can't, or thinking back, what was I working on yesterday? What do I need to work on today? If you've already determined that last night, you can just start off right away in the morning and get active and get yourself going in the right direction. So planning will keep you on track, but it, also can, as I said, shed light on potential obstacles. So it, what it'll do is when you're getting stuck, you can then start thinking about how do I 
get unstuck or what, what can the solutions be? We, there are always a solution for something. Um, knowing what really is your most important thing for today. I always tell people to use the top three things that I wanna accomplish today. Those are the top three things that I wanna do. And when I know that, it's more manageable to handle those interruptions because then I can compare what I've decided to do and what's really important for me today, I can compare it to what somebody else wants me to do or an interruption, I have something compared to. But if I haven't determined what's important for my day, then it's really easy to give it up to someone else. Especially when we're home now with our children at home and everybody's biting for our time, it's really important to set the stage for them also. What time are we gonna break for lunch? What time do the children do their schoolwork? What time are we gonna just have some family activities? So planning is a huge part. Uh, keeping up our general routines. Now, for those of us who have been regularly working at home, it's probably much easier to adapt than if you've not been in that process before. But as I said, we've got more people biting for our attention. We have spouses at home, children at home maybe. Um, in my case, my daughter now works from home. Um, make sure you're getting up at the same time and you're going to bed at the same time. Now your day might be structured differently because we might need to break things up a little more, more often because we have more people. Maybe you need to take care of the kids and your spouse will do it later, whatever that looks like. But making that schedule and adjusting with everything that's going on, it will really make it a whole lot easier if we plan the night before and then we have a schedule to work off of. So focus, <laughs> that's a big one. So distractions and interruptions, a cluttered work environment, all those things really get in our way sometimes and even our own habits that no longer serve us can take focus away from what really matters to us. So think about multitasking. So I want everybody to just kind of sit up in their chairs and put both feet on the floor. And I want you to actually pick up your right foot and make clockwise circles with your right foot. And then take your index finger and make clockwise circles. So we're all fairly coordinated and can usually do that. Both of them are going the right way, but if you keep your your uh, foot going clockwise and you reverse your finger. Okay, I can all hear you <laughs> laughing right now. <laughs> um, that just goes to prove that what we think we can do, and that's multitasking, if it takes mental energy, we cannot. We cannot multitask when it takes our physical and mental en energy. So, you know, being interrupted, um, you know, having the, you know, watching, constantly worrying about our email, all of those things, if it takes mental focus, you really need to make sure that you're taking the time. It will save you so much time, productivity. The, the last um, statistic I showed that it takes anywhere from 18 to 24 minutes for us to, once we've been interrupted, we're in our zone, we get interrupted, for us to get back to that same place. So it's really important that we find ways to stay focused. You can use a timer. Um, I use a program called Focus at Will. Um, music works for some people. A little story about music is I was in a program one time we were and the facilitator had us working on a project and so he turned on this really nice soft classical music and for me that was wonderful but the gal next to me she you know must have had a little bit of adhd and she was going nuts she goes i can't stand this music you got to turn it off so not music doesn't really work for everybody but find what works for you to help you stay in the zone a little bit longer and the app you use is Focus at Will? Yes, Focus at Will. And um, it's, it's a music program and you can put in different, it'll ask you different questions so it'll find the right music that'll work for you. Interesting, thanks for the share. And then if you're constantly busy but not being productive, 
you can get discouraged or even burnt out. You may feel like you're checking things off your to-do list, but might just be playing whack-a-mole and constantly putting out fires. Anybody feel that way at times? Reflect on where you can stand in terms of the time that you're spending and you're, you could possibly be playing whack-a-mole and how that makes you feel at the end of the day. You know, the inability to focus on what truly matters adds stress to our life. And um, we can become overwhelmed with it. We feel like we're working but not getting anything accomplished. Um, so busy days that can bring unexpected things, you know, things that might be urgent but not really important. And we feel like we have to, you know, jump onto that. So even if you're an avid to-do lister user, days can spin out of control. So think about how you plan your days better and play a little bit less of that whack-a-mole and get focused. So I think this is a great time for us to pull out that someday list that you might have, you know, the idea list. Um, maybe you've been keeping for a while or maybe you haven't kept one at all. And so maybe the time is to write that someday list. You know, maybe you've been talking about wanting to write a book. So create a new program for your business. Change your business model. You know, maybe you're going to change who you're serving currently. Um, put some time on your calendar that specifically is for doing some of those items. Maybe think about a vacation that you can take next year or towards the end of this year with your family. That can reduce some of the stress. But take some of this time because we don't want to look back and say, I wish I'd spent more time working on my book or whatever that might be. So now is the time to take advantage of this time that we have and the situation that we're in. So self-care is one of the most important things that I think you can especially of those, you know, for us who tend to prioritize things over what, you know, we really need to do in our lives. We prioritize work over that. But that walking, walking the dog, getting outside, have a place to that you can also create a mental routine. So take, you know, it might be thinking about a, a wonderful place that you've gone on vacation or someplace that gets you in a relaxing mode or a pleasant event you went or maybe the last, you know, family gathering that you had. You know, take your time to just be able to relax back into that. Um, thinking positive can help us so much with our self-care along with our stress. Um, Re-energizing yourself, and that's, you know, reading. When's the last time that you've really spent some relaxing time reading? Um, again, listening to music when you're working or just not working, just um, it can lift you up, especially if it's some fun music that you haven't listened to for a while. Meditation, that might be something that works for you. Taking the walk, taking, you know, being outside. Um, another thing is just laugh. Um, share a silly or funny story with those that are around you. Have, have everybody come about, you know, what's that thing you've been embarrassed about or what, what's the funniest thing that you feel like's ever happened to you? And, and get ourselves laughing. I think it's a great way to reduce some of the stress. Um, relax. We might not be able to go to a spa, but you can treat yourself at home. Um, you know, do a manicure, pedicure, you can relax in the tub, but just find some ways um, to relax and in, enjoy um, this downtown a little bit. And then gratitude. I think that's the best thing we can do to release stress is at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, write out, your, write out a journal or make a gratitude list. I have been through a lot in the last, you know, um, few years, and I just look at every day as a blessing in my life. And no matter how bad things get, there is always something to be grateful for. So I'd love to hear what are some of the things that you're grateful for at this time. 
Well, while we're waiting for the attendees to type in there, I'll go. Uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to think out of the box that I wasn't taking the opportunity to do because I was just busy working. Uh, thankful for friendships and the collaboration you know, it gives you an opportunity to be with others virtually <laughs> and still continue building your business. Great. Do we have any other comments? I'm not seeing any come in yet. Okay. Oh, there we go. Family, friends, more time forced to appreciate what I have <laughs> and recognizing the simplicity of life. That was from Mary. That was our president of the chamber. Awesome. Sally, Sally says, I am grateful to be able to take my business into a different direction by using Zoom. Uh, Diane Carson says, I'm grateful for the technology that allows me to chat with my six-year-old, 96-year-old, uh, I think it's supposed to be, dad in the UK every day. Uh, Kelly says, and uh, says, I think just grateful for time. Sometimes we get so entrenched in the day to day that we forget to stop and do things we haven't taken time to do. And we are so thankful for Kelly at the chamber. Uh, and Sherry says, my husband still has a job stopping to be thankful because there is always something to be grateful for. So awesome. True. I love all of those. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, there are many more things we can be grateful for. So our energy Energy also impacts our ability to focus and it, affect, it can affect our, what truly matters in our life. So productivity can either flourish or fizzle, fizzle based on how we pace our lives. So if you're stressed, overwhelmed, overworked, your productivity can suffer and your mind and body just simply won't have what it needs to fuel your success. So one of the largest causes of procrastination is our energy and getting quality sleep is crucial along with how it impacts our focus and what really truly matters to us. So another thing about working is working no more than 90 minutes at a time because once we pass that 90 minute segment even though we don't realize it, our energy levels start to shift and start to, to um, down spiral. So even though you're still working, you're not working as well or as being as focused as it, it could be. So think about how you can set a timer or do something and not work longer than 90 minutes at a time. And then also working in your prime time. So we, it could be different for each and every one of us but some people are morning people. Some people are, you know, evening people. Some people need to wait till after lunch to really work on mental things. So know when your prime time is so you can be more focused and more energy during that time. And then a brain dump. So this is the best stress reliever that I've always given um, the idea to my clients. And that is when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling stressed, just do a brain dump. Just get all that stuff out of your head onto a piece of paper just to get it out of our head. Because we have 60,000 thoughts that go through our head every given day. And that's a lot to deal with. And some of it is we need to capture some of it just needs to go away, but some of it we need to use at a later time. So get it all out of your head and that's the time you can prioritize it and organize it in a way that best serves you. And then our natural productivity style. It's really important that you're working naturally and authentically. It reduces our stress. So when we're looking at our productivity, working on our natural productivity style, it's about how we make decisions. Are we, um, you know, introvert, extrovert? How we pace ourselves during the day? Are we a real systematic person? Or are we by the sheet of our pants type person, filing that next shiny thing? Or, and, and then details. Are we really, really structured, need all the details? Or are you a big picture person? All of that makes a difference and affects our personality style, our um, productivity style, I mean. And when we're working in that style, you can reduce the stress by just by working authentically. 
And there is, um, there's a link there. Maybe Karen, you might want to grab that and put it in the chat. But there's um, a, sel a self-assessment um, on my website. And then there's also the, the big, bigger assessment that's available. So, and then systems. We spend a lot of time and energy because we don't have systems in place. And I think systems stands for save. It saves you stress, time, energy, and money. Systematizing is a simple procedure of creating a routine way of responding to all of the tasks that we you know, have. And when we systematize different areas of our lives, it makes us easier to do those same routines. Systems are vital for your businesses. So this is another time for you to take those processes and systems that are in your head and get them documented. One of the easy ways you can do that is through Zoom and record a, a process that you do. It might be on the computer or just talking about it. But you can then basically create a process so that when you hire someone or if you have employees, when you bring them back, you are taking something off your plate that you can now give to them with instructions on how to do it. I love this quote, challenges are make what makes life interesting and overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. And, you know, we don't know what, you know, next month, next year is gonna look like for us. But we are in a challenge right now, but we will get through this. It's just a moment in time. There's no doubt in my mind that we're gonna get through this and we're gonna be on the other side. So, and we're gonna look back and say, oh my gosh, look at what we went through, but oh my gosh, look where I am today. And I think that's a positive thing. So I'd like to share with you, I also have some re -re free resources. Um, it's at the productivityexperts.com backslash D hyphen stress uh, hyphen zone backslash. Um, there are articles, there are videos I've been doing, just one to two minute videos. There's links on helping you to de-stress around stress management, working from home, productivity mindset. So it's all free. And then at the bottom of that page, there's also more resources, some downloadables, um, some actual um, info, uh, you know, some sh worksheets to work on. There, I have my TV show, the building, um, business building videos are out there, podcast, and so much more. So if you think that any of that is valuable to you, um, I just wanna let you know it's out there and it's free. And then just, these are my two past books, The Productivity Habit, 10-Week um, Journal to Be More Productive. That one um, just was released at the end of the year. And then my, really my last two reminders. One is life is short, not to take it one day at a time. It's essential for having the unknown and the reduction of stress. So I invite you to end your stressed zone if you're in one. So Karen, do we have any questions or comments? Uh, I can't see them, Kathy. I don't know if Will is still listening. I lost internet and had to come back in. Okay, so let, me, not... let, me, let me pull it up and see if I can look through them. I lost internet too, but it popped back on. I'm not sure what's going on, I think. I think everybody is just doing a Zoom at the same time. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> um, I did not see any, uh, any questions come in. I did post uh, Kathy's link in the chat though. Okay. Any other comments? Any questions? Nick and Bon, on something I've said or something? Okay, okay. You got some. Mary says, how do you manage relationships when friends seem to be much more moody or struggling? Mm. So, so I think that's a great question because I think we're going to be in a whole, there's, I think there's kind of three different groups of people. One who are going to be the, 
Debbie Downers or the, oh my gosh, what, you know, really fearful right now and want to just pull up the covers and hide or complain. And then we have the people who are looking for the other side of this and, you know, really, you know, charging out there. And then there's those people who want to be that way, but just don't know how to. So I think the best thing we can do is be positive, find something positive, something and remind them about being grateful remind them that they haven't had maybe any friends or family that have contracted the virus thinking about just find ways to bring your gratitude to them and i i think when we stay positive and we don't um kind of give in to their negativity it it will rub off on them okay um let's see someone's still asking for the link again so, Will, if you could put that in. Uh, Kelly says, I agree 100%, Kathy. The only thing you can control is your attitude and the way you respond to things. Okay. Any other comments? Mary said, thank you. Great information. Okay. Any other questions? Well, Kathy, we thank you so much from the Fenton Chamber. Obviously, you're a member as well, but we thank you for being a part of this and giving all this great information. And, and there's a multitude of ways they can get in contact with you. And I highly suggest they take your quiz. Uh, I know one of the things that saved my life, Kathy shared a long time ago, was to color code my calendar and know where my time was going. And uh, She's just a, a wealth of information, and that's just how her mind thinks. <laughs> and those of us that are not so organized like she is, we can't live without people like Kathy. So thank you again for being on here. And as a Fenton Chamber member, thank you for those that are attending and taking time out of your busy schedule. And please put it on your calendar every Wednesday now at 11 o'clock. We'll continue to do our series. And, and again, is there anything else you want to share with everyone, Kathy, before we close? Um, the only, I, I think, um, you know, thank you for allowing me to share um, my, my thoughts and my knowledge with you all. And, you know, just be grateful and take this time and, and use it wisely. Very good. Everyone have a super great day. And until next time, be blessed. <laughs>